Hey there, everyone. What have we got here? Well, I picked up this go kart frame for free, and we're going to turn it into a shifter cart. So I picked up this go kart frame for free off one of my mates, Hugh Jeffries. You might know him. So this was the project me and Hugh tackled in year 11 at our school. We found this frame sitting in the engines room and the teacher said we could take it and make a go kart out of it. So he slapped on a five and a half horsepower stationary engine, which was included with the go kart, but I have taken it off just so it's easy to move around. So let's run you through this marvelous go kart because it's packed with some extra features. For example, we've got a few freebies, which is weird because the entire thing was free. We've got a uh, some brakes, but that's okay, they can go in the bin because we don't need brakes. And we also got a wider range of pulleys. We won't be using them, but they were included. So let's go through everything that's included on this go-kart. This go-kart is chock-a-block with an array of features including the frame itself, a seat, completely ruined looking wheels, a light, and a seat belt that will probably end up in the bin. Okay, now that we've run through the go kart so I'm tearing it apart, and tearing it apart could not be any more simple, especially we have to bolt anything on. <laughs> Taking off the front wheels, we can see that they are split rims, which are amazing, but the previous owner put all different size bolts in it, which are not amazing. So I switched them all out for some M8 high tensile bolts, which is not needed but looks cool and that's all that really matters. The main reason why this go-kart was never finished at school is because it was someone's job to get the front inner tubes, but somehow managed to put it off for 8 months straight. So I bought some and installed them, which makes the wheels actually functional. Alright, so the front wheels are now fully attached and we're now working on the back axle. So this back axle is not the original one, it's just sitting over there. Um, but, the original back axle has caused us a lot of problems. The bearings did not want to come off and so we have had to cut through them with an angle grinder. And we really didn't need anything else but the bearings. But because they wouldn't come off, we um, had to go get some more bearings, which cost a bloody fortune! But anyway... Um, so I got this back axle a while ago when I built my drift car um, and we're going to use the original wheels because the hubs that were on here uh, These came with the uh, this axle for the drift truck and also fill up this wheel because the clowns who worked on this before me and Hugh Decided to drill and tap different size holes for every single thread. So that was so much fun to take apart Anyway, now it's time to assemble the entire back axle. We've got our bearings. We've got the sprocket and the brake Let's do it now so one of the main things we had to get off the old axle were the bearing carriers and the new bearings I got were just a tad too small so I wrapped the outside of them in electrical tape to expand them and hold them in place, which works perfectly. After bolting both sides on we slid the axle into place with the sprocket and the road in place to see how everything's lined up. Then we got a very special package. We got a chain guard, yeah. carby mount, and all this wiring. Fun. And everyone's favourite jobs of wiring. Oh, we got our gear shifter. Got some biscuits for our carb. There's the big boy right there. Got our carby air filter. Oh, it comes with a spark plug. What a bonus! Got in here. Not the carby itself. This is everything we need to install the motor and get it in running order. Okay, so since we are working on a shifter cart, we need to add a shift the gears. Now, while we could have the motor back here and then just have the gear shifter down here, it would be a pain to try and rework the chain to come from back here to over here. So, we are going to sit the motor right here. But how are we going to do that? Well, I've got some angle line here cut to some shapes and if we slot that in here 
That is just gonna sit right on there and then we'll weld some plate to it to mount the motor onto. So that should work good. So now we just have to weld all this together and this to the frame. So let's do that now. Now I'm not a professional welder, but I highly recommend buying a little bit extra material for if you fuck it up or for tuning in your welder. That's what I did and I got pretty good results. When welding to the frame, make sure it's very strong because a lot of forces will be happening on this extension. Next up's the motor mount. I used a bit of paper to get the dimensions to drill the holes, but they weren't too spot on, so a quick run over with the file fixed it up very quickly. Okay, so we've got the engine mounted and hooked up to the back axle. So what we had to do was we had to uh, get a few little angle iron uh, strips and weld it to a plate. Therefore, it's raised up a little bit when we get to the bolts underneath. Now, the it's only tacked in at the moment. We're just going to be waiting for the engine to fully uh, work and run before we completely weld it in so we know everything's fine. At the moment, we're just evening up each side of the axle. Uh, to attach the wheels on the brakes and tighten everything down. Then it's pretty much just attach the carby, fuel tank and wiring and then throttle and all that and then we're just all those other little bits and bobs and we should be good to go for a test drive. Attaching the carby up is a quick and simple job and then we can run a temporary throttle cable to make sure everything works. Time to work on the gear shifter and this is an old gear shifter I had off an old pit bike which I'm cutting to make a little bit shorter. We can drill a 6mm hole into it and do the same to a few flat bars of steel and attach it in the correct order and we have a simple gear shifter. Alright, so you just saw me do on the back axle, the carby and the front line now, also this shifter. It's a little bit wonky at the moment because it's not fully tightened up. So now, this seat doesn't really like to stay in place, so we should probably go fix that. I've got some more flat bar and chopped them into tiny little squares with the trusty hacksaw. Now I drilled a hole into them and did the exact same thing with the seat to line everything up for a quick weld. <laughs> So we've changed up the engine mounting just a little bit before, we were um, trying to bolt on the engine from underneath here, it was just a pain in the ass, we could never line up the bolts, it was all rubbish. So what we've done is we have got some high tensile bolts, we've chopped them down to the correct height, threaded them into the engine so we, they act as studs and we just drop it onto the plate and tighten it up from underneath there. It's perfection, it's great. Now let's move on. So what's left to do you might ask? Well there's a couple of things, there's the brakes, there's a fuel tank, there's the electrics. All those things are going to be done after we paint it. Brakes are because I can't find them at the moment, but we'll get onto that. So while we're waiting, we're going to strip everything down, uh, prep it for paint and actually paint it. Okay screw it, we're going to work on the brakes right now before we start painting. So it's already got this plate welded on here, which is its mounting bracket for the previous brakes. However, I don't have those previous brakes and I couldn't find anything that would match up to it. So I've got some pit bike brakes here. Hopefully this will be strong enough. It's cable adjusted, so that's good. But because that's not going to mount directly on there, we can make a template and I've got one right here. This is one I made out of 3mm MDF. It lines up and works all good. But now we can't just have it out of 3mm MDF because it's not going to be strong enough. So we need to make one out of steel. And here's one right here. These lines are bolts up perfectly, so let's go attach it now. I'll file down a flat spot on the axle so that the keyway has something to grip onto. 
then we can line everything up and bolt it all together. Okay, so I've gone around and spot primed all the little areas where I applied the rust converter just because that needed a primer, but my actual paint doesn't require a primer for this normal painted surfaces that aren't rusty. So that's all good. But now that, that these little areas are all spot primed and that's dry, we can now apply the red paint. So that's the end of this video however it's not the end of the build. If you tune in next time we're going to be doing a step by step tutorial on how to wire up this entire thing and then after that we're going for a cruise. So thank you guys so much for watching I'll see you guys next time.